Shalom Uvocha. Today, after having a lot of time to think about it and trying to organize my thoughts about this um, topic, I am willing to speak about a very sensitive issue that um, the Rambam, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, he explained that um, water and earth, even though have 100% different qualities and, and characters, they still mix and have a point that in that point they join and it's on the edges it's when they meet in the mud that's where water and earth are are kissing each other and fire and water as well that's steam and air and earth as well that's dust and also when you put earth into great heat that's where the earth is melting and you can see those crazy reactions of the volcanoes and because that some of the things that we are um, talking about are also emotional and also written in the Bible and in the Jewish rules and therefore they are known as mitzvot and obligations. So the borders and the way to approach them and to see them and to talk about them can be very, very deep and very, very um, sensitive. And therefore, we need to be very careful when we're talking about that. So, I wanted to talk today about relationship. Um, I wanted to talk about the physical um, act of, of mating. And wanted to explain a little bit um, from different angles about this um, very important issue. And amazing issue and wonderful issue and also very painful issue and sensitive issue because you know for an example when a person wants to speak about God and we all believe that God is the source of mercy and source of kindness and everyone loves God and everyone wants to believe in God's kindness and suddenly you see a radical group that are going and killing in the name of God and raping in the name of God and, uh, and, and destroying the world and, and killing innocent people and abusing innocent souls in the name of God. So it makes you wonder, it makes you think, like, how can it be? But people like thieves, like murderers, they're allowing themselves to use a holy tool, a holy instrument, a holy thing and to and to steal it and to possess it and to make it their own and by that to destroy the holiness of that thing and to create a horrible shade on, on the world and um, relationship, um, sex if you call it that way in English um, is something that is very very holy it's actually the only way to bring life down to earth to the world it's something that people should treat it with so much respect and so much uh, dignity and so much uh, being so careful and sensitive about it and um, and people went off that um, main way of how it's supposed to be dealt with and they took it to a place of lusts and desires 
And it's not that I'm standing in a position of blaming others or how oh, look how what you have done, what are you doing, or something like that. Because it's a known thing that even the greatest righteous people of them all, in all the generations, include everyone, including everyone, had their challenge in that topic. And with no doubt, this is one of the things that there is no one person that was completely clean in that thing. And as holy as you are, and important as you are, and closer to God's will in that aspect of life, um, that's how when you fail, your failure might cause um, bad consequences and, um, and, and, and horrible results. And when a person is finding himself that he's climbing and reaching levels in spirituality or in holiness, of course that that person should consider more and more um, to protect himself and to find ways how to be more um, focused on doing things in even holier way and more appropriate way and nicer way. I am first of all going to present um, the situation that we're talking about and then we're going to look about at it a little bit from the side of the Torah and from the side of Halakha and then we're going to discuss a little bit as much as time will allow us because of course on every topic and especially a topic that is so big and wide you can speak, at least I can speak for days. Um, so... Um, First of all, simply, um, a, 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 a couple of people, a man and a woman, they see each other, they like each other, they feel attraction, they feel a great need um, to be close to each other, and they're talking, and they're finding it nice, and then they like feel physical attachment means that they feel that their bodies are willing to accomplish something emotional even though that bodies are not an emotional um, tool, instrument. The body is physical and the emotions are inside. The emotions are a spirit, is a spirit. It's not a physical organ. You don't really feel with your heart your heart might be the vessel to hold and contain feelings inside of it, but feelings is a spirit. And feelings is something that you feel and you can relate it to your heart. But really, your physical heart is not the organ that you feel with. And therefore, when a person or a couple, they feel a certain um, attachment, they feel a certain desire in their bodies to attach, to touch, to feel, to come closer to each other. So of course that that is a sign for an emotional need, for a spiritual um, salvation that needs to take place um, in their lives. But because that we are um, built in a physical way and the Creator Himself, He made us to be physical, that's why we must complete our mission, our work in a physical way. And like that, for an example, if a person, he needs to feed his body with a certain vitamin and he doesn't know that, or let's say there is a, some spiritual spark in a certain fruit, something that he himself doesn't know that is waiting for him over there, but that fruit is really important for his needs so the creator will put a desire in that person's mind for fruits like you will, will wake up in 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 that morning and 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 green apples will not w move away from from his thoughts like he he gonna have to put his hand on a green apple and he will see other people eating apples and he's gonna hear the sound of that bite of that green apple and like Apples, 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 apples. And it's only because that you need that spark of spirit that is treasured inside a specific apple. And the Creator will wake you up for that. So He can wake you up with the smell, with the sight, 
with with the flavors memory in your mind to pull you to take that bite of that apple that is required for you and you don't know how it helps you it might heal you from cancer you don't have a clue it might heal your digesting system it might bring a new energy to your heart it might clean your veins like you, you don't have a clue how mysterious is the creator and how great he is while hiding his greatness in in physicality and even more so when we're talking about the highest thing of them all that is the ability of a couple to bring life down to earth to the world and when you do it with purity with pure intention with with holy mind then you are very fast um, can do that amazing thing to bring life down to earth and to bring another soul the most precious and and valuable thing that that there is in this world but when a person is falling or a couple are falling um, from that spiritual level of doing something right and in a proper way so then they are contaminating um, that act and instead of bringing pure souls down to earth um, they might bring damaged souls and bent and even worse than that they might bring um, bad spirits down to earth spirits that might be evil might be uh, might might suffer greatly and there are uh, many dividings and it's a very very complex method to explain and like i said it can take days uh, to speak about it but i'll try to touch every one of those um, parts so first of all this is relationship like we said that that's a natural thing every man every woman and also animals they have that desire and also plants also trees also flowers even if they're not mating physically like like animals or people are um still um the spiritual um the physical the physical um um nature of mating exists in them as well there is a seed and there is a place for that seed to 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 be accepted and over there like an egg and over there um that um will the life will be produced um okay so that's first of all now um there is the torah the torah the bible is telling us um first of all stories amazing stories that will teach us um, the way of the land, the way to behave, the way to act, how role models and people that we for sure admire, like Abraham, like Isaac, like Jacob, like uh, righteous people, that we're going to learn from them how to behave, how to treat our um, partners, what to do, how to do. And of course, the Torah is also... Um, never hides the truth so if someone messed up if something someone violated a certain rule or did something wrong immediately the torah will show it the torah expose everything and opens everything and does not um let things to be hidden um like different scripts of different uh, cultures and um, that are re-editing and remodeling and redesigning the the their methods the bible is complete and strict and clean and and sifted and revealing only the real truth exactly like it took place in real time and um, after that we know that the righteous people and um, the sages they got the permission from heaven from the creator and uh, by the last prophets um, by uh, Nehemiah ve, ve, um, ve, uh, ve Azariah, um, and by Daniel and his courthouse um, Ezra ve Nehemiah, I'm sorry Ezra ve Nehemiah, and um, Daniel's courthouse 
to go and to and to teach us and to guide us in the oral Torah. And the oral Torah is explaining to us the real true will of the Creator um, in the mitzvot, in the 613 mitzvot that are written in the Bible. Um, so about relationship, about uh, sex, the main mitzvah, um, so you have two mitzvot, um, if I'm not wrong, I'm trying to gather it all into into one pack, so slowly, Bezrat Hashem. So um, first of all, um, the obligation um, to, to multiply, to have children, that's an, an obligation. Um, people are commanded uh, by God to multiply. You must have children. Um, second mitzvah is that the man and wife, the souls, um, they should be tuned to each other. And the Torah um, found the way, means Hashem chose that way, to reveal His will to us by commanding us that the relationship will uh, always, and with no exceptions, be based on a mutual will and for sure with the agreement of the woman. And there is no other way that is permitted by the Torah, by the Bible, and by the oral Torah, by the Halakha. And even though that today you can find many people, many um, leaders of communities or so-called rabbis or whatever, or even rabbis who are um, permitting certain um, power to be forced on women to have relationship. This is something that is very, very far from the divine will of heaven. And of course, that like that it's written in the Shulchan Aruch, in the Jewish uh, book of rules, it's written over there that if the woman has been forced uh, to the relationship, even by her husband, even just because he was not sensitive enough to her needs, to her will, the kids of that relationship, the result of that relationship, the souls that will come out of that, um, of that um, um, mating will be damaged in a spiritual way and they will be called Bene Anusa, the children of a raped woman. A woman that is being forced to a relationship is called raped, even if she been forced only a little bit against her uh, will. Now, the main thing to see here is that, of course, in relationship, um, there are many situations that it's not like black and white, you need to do this or you need to do that, or that a husband should do this or the woman should do that. It's not so simple. And it's clear and obvious that in relationship you have many sensitive situations and sometimes you need to have more patience for the woman and sometimes you need to have more patience for the man and sometimes you need to understand that people came with trauma to their relationship and people came with fear to their relationship and people doesn't know and this is why and exactly this is the reason why patience must be the key and why love and appreciation and this is why the world is calling it to make love, to be together with love. If love is not over there, if mutual love and attraction and, and, and will and understanding is not what that leads the couple to the relationship, it's very off track. It's not the right way. It's very unhealthy and must be treated and must be discussed and communication and conversation between the couple and also to find someone that will be able to guide them and to assist them and to help them to open up their own feelings and their own emotions and to speak about things calmly and in adult way and in a mature way and in a nice way in an understanding way and um, is very much needed and and required for the relationship. So the mitzvah is called mitzvat onata, 
Mitzvat onata means her time, means that the relationship must take place in the time that will be correct and good emotionally for the woman, in her time, in the time that she will be willing to have relationship with her husband. If she doesn't want to have relationship with her husband, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. You cannot fix it. You cannot fix a, an emotional pain. If you hurt someone emotionally, you can apologize, you can ask for forgiveness, you can you can show that you that that you regret on that, but you cannot take it back. It's not something that you can fix. You can only be honest and truthful to apologize and to try not uh, to do that again and to correct yourself as much as you can, but really to um, to to fix it is something very very like close to impossible. And of course, the, the Torah as well taught us that there are certain days um, of the month that are permitted for the relationship to be done and for the couple to be physically together and are days that the couple are not supposed to be together. And those rules are being called uh, Nida, days of Nida. And the main days that are not allowed for men and a woman to sleep, to be together, are the days when the woman had her has have her uh, monthly period, and when she starts um, bleeding or a little bit before uh, that she feels that it's about to come, so they need to separate. And for all those days that the woman has blood, and like it's normal, n n like no one needs explanation, or at least no one supposed to need an explanation that for that issue that it's not normal to be together in, in those days it's not natural it's not supposed to be that way it's not clean it's not healthy the woman is going through a very deep emotional process with herself of inner cleaning and she needs time to be alone with herself and and to go through whatever she's going through and men probably in 100% cannot really understand what women are going through in those days and just need to 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 take one step back and it's a normal thing and it's not too much to ask and if a man is finding himself that he's so lost and confused and he can't um, uh, manage without sex without relationship and like okay so you have some mental problem that that needs uh, some kind of therapy that needs to be treated treated if you are really not able to understand that your partner is going through something that is not allowing him to to be with you that is uh, like she's she even if she's not in the mood even if she um, she like just tired or or or, or got some like um, whatever she wants to go to sleep it, like a person must understand that a woman, for him, a man, must understand. And of course, from the other side as well, if women are finding themselves that they are like so in such a great need that they cannot understand that their men are not always able to, to, to be with them, this is something that a person must take responsibility for on and work on yourself and take responsibility. It cannot be that your spouse will become a, a, a slave of, of your lusts or your crazy needs. And the problem is that when the partner is allowing you to take as much as you need all the time and to have more and more and more, it doesn't really satisfy your thirst. It doesn't really make you satisfied and full. You don't say, okay, thank you. Like now I'm, I'm going to be relaxed for the next week or so. Like... Uh, some people can wake up uh, in the middle of the night and like they want again and again and again it's it becomes like it's not normal it's not healthy emotionally it's destroying you yourself and of course that it's very not pleasant for your partner to realize that he's being used by you for your own needs because in a relationship of course the the couple is supposed to to show their love to each other. They must show love. They must love each other. They must give their love 
and to be able to, in the same time, to enjoy the fact that their partner loves them and to be loved as well. So if one of the sides is busy in pleasuring himself and being loved completely and that's his main will to take and not to give, so of course that the partner will be very hurt from that and cannot really manage that, cannot really deal with that. It's very painful and insulting and shaming feeling and, and, it's, uh, and, and it's not nice. So, like we said, you have those days of Nida, days that the woman, she sees blood, and in those days, of course, the man should not um, think about those things at all and must, like, help and, and understand and be normal and function in the house and help his wife that she is, like, uh, basically not, uh, not well. She's going through some physical thing and she needs, uh, she needs help. She needs uh, someone to care about her and to allow her to to take care of herself in her physical uh, situation and in her emotional situation and need to be respected. And after that, the Torah taught us that a woman needs to count another seven days and in the next day she, uh, she, need, she needs to count complete seven days and then in the eighth day, in the right one moment after the seventh day is finishing, from the moment she found herself clean completely and the period stopped completely and she's 100% clean after checking herself. After seven days like those, that she's 100% clean and she's 100% um, pure spiritually from that hard experience of, of period and blood. Um, they allow, after, uh, allowed, of course, after mikveh um, to be together. This is the way that the Torah, that the Bible, that the sages um, taught us and guide us um, for healthy and normal um, way of life and also explain to us that that is the will of God. And, um, and a person should understand that it's a wonderful thing, that he will listen to the voice of God, to the voice of the sages and will follow those rules and of course like i said if there are issues between a couple if there are emotional issues if people have problems of addiction of crazy needs of emotional imbalance they need to be able um, to speak with a with a professional to speak with with a person that can help them can assist them and to find ways to help them to adjust to this reality that is needed from both sides. So that's the side of the halakha behind this um, story. Now, I wanted to mention another thing that is very, very important. Um, mikveh is not um, a shower, by the way. Mikveh is, um, is a source of... Um, of water is a, 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 is like a, 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 a pool a natural source of water water that was not um, drawn by by a machine or by any vessel natural water source um, and over there a woman should deep under the water um, minimum of, of two times for that um, one time to be uh, one hundred percent um, pure and uh, covered um, from every angle in pure water that are providing spiritual purification and not cle physical cleaning. We're not talking about physical cleaning. We're talking about the spiritual purification that is needed. And um, now, I think that it's important to understand um, what happens. In a relationship when it does not bring the couple to have children many times the couple can have the relationship without children um, coming out to the world because of that but as we know the sperm of the man holds spirit inside of it and that is life it's life itself and also inside of the woman um, there is a place for the seed to be um, 
to be uh, received, to be catched. And it's not only the egg itself, because when the egg is over there, so a baby will come out to the world from that, um, from that act, but also when they were together and there was no egg over there, um, still there is a place over there for that sperm to be accepted. And the, the womb um, and, and, the, the, um, and the physical body of, of the woman produces life. So when the man is coming and bring in his seed, the sperm, so he actually release a portion of his soul, of his spirit, into the, the body of, of his mate. And over there, the, the life that are being produced when there is no egg, um, will not catch a physical body, but still will hold life. And those are spirits that are being released out to the world. And a person should understand that when he is mating, he is bringing out spirits to the world. And corresponding to the intention of the heart and mind of the couple, um, the nature of those spirits will be set. Means that if they were united with love and with honor and with mutual appreciation and with all the good and great attributes, the soul that will catch form or physical form in a child or um, or spiritual form as a spirit will be as good as their mindset, as their intention. And if they had selfish or any kind of negative um, thought or intention, um, self-centered or, God forbid, evil, in that situation, the couple might find themselves creating and bringing down to earth evil spirits. And this is why there is a prohibition that is called Zera Lebatala, to spill the seed um, for no purpose, for no real, um, for no real holy intention of mating. And, um, and when the sperm is not getting into the body of the woman, so over there, something very, very off um, happens. And this is where bad spirits are coming out to the world from. And men should consider that very, very, very seriously, not to throw their seed um, for no reason and without a decent and normal and kosher relationship um, because the outcomes of that are, are horrible and are creating the damage and the destruction of the world in so many ways. Now, I can explain to you a little bit about it, but something very important for me to mention is that because of that importance of not throwing seed um, for no purpose, um, many men found an easier way for themselves um, to deal with this situation. And instead of doing horrible things like masturbating or whatever, um, they are just forcing their wives um, to the relationship or forcing other women to a relationship. And they're allowing themselves to say it's less worse to be with your wife or with a woman when she's not so much into it, not willing to be, just for not um, throwing seed for no purpose. 
and again it's like if you ask my opinion about it it's like to say okay listen i feel like killing someone but instead of killing him i'm just gonna beat him up really really well and uh, and like you say to yourself like i feel like eating um, a, a, a live animal alive without ritual slaughtering it but i cannot do that so you know what i'm gonna eat uh, like uh, uh, um, something that is not kosher, like uh, I'm, I'm going to eat something filthy, something like wrong, something not right to eat. You know, Jewish people, we're not eating pork, we're not eating shrimp, we're not eating like um, all kinds of predators and animals that are like seafood and stuff like that, sharks, we're not eating those animals. And like a person will say, you know, like I feel like uh, eat, drinking blood and I don't want to drink blood. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to eat pork. Okay, it's better. No, it's not better. That's a prohibition. That's a violation. And that's a violation. You want to say that it's a lower violation? I don't, I don't see how you can say that it's a lower violation. It's true that if a person is masturbating and throwing his seed for no reason, he will create something very wrong by doing that. It's true. And it's true that the outcomes of the seed of those souls into the womb of a woman, like we said before, will bring out a soul or a spirit that will not be as upgraded and holy as the souls that came out to the world in purity. But... What with all the emotional pain that a woman will go through? What with the abuse? What with the hurt and the trauma that you might cause a person by forcing him to act in a way that he is not willing, against his heart, against his intention? This is something that you cannot pay back for. This is something that you cannot heal. Women that have been hurt by men or men that have been hurt by sexual abuse they can they they cannot recover like even if they learn how to deal with the trauma even if they learn how to how to function in their life in a normal way the scratches are bleeding and waking up back to life over and over again and again and you cannot ignore that scream you cannot be so selfish and self-centered and 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 evil to ignore the emotional destruction that you cause by using another person for your physical needs. So, I disagree with that sick method, I call it, very sick method of forcing women um, because of man's need. It's a horrible thing. It's not allowed to do. And if you have such a severe problem and issue that you're not able to hold yourself it's it's so it's okay you need therapy you need to go and talk about your problem with a professional or in a group or with friends or with someone who will help you with a teacher <coughs> with a decent and normal rabbi or whatever and sometimes it's very hard to to find someone who really can help you because many of those teachers and many of those so-called mentors or rabbis might be as sick or in even a worse condition than you so it's it's a tough luck it's a problem you need to find a way to deal and work with yourself and i think that the main way for a couple to work on their issues is while talking to each other about their problems that the man will sit with his wife that the woman will sit with her husband and they will sit and talk and discuss and he will say but listen it's it's very hard for me and she's going to say yes I understand and it's hard for me as well and this and that and they, they will go deep into detailed conversation and sometimes it's hard and sometimes you need to learn how to talk for things to, to become uh, appropriate and right and fixed and correct. I think we covered a lot, right? There is maybe much more to say um, but... Um, the main thing that uh, really needs to be um, discussed is that things must happen in a relationship out of love and out of mutual respect and not out of fear. And also the education for our beloved children 
in that area to teach them and to guide them to life must be based on love and based on our will for them to enjoy holy and pure life and not based on our fear that they will not be hurt and that they will not do something wrong or whatever. We just need to try to do the best that we can to present and show love and caring to everyone, to anyone around us. And um, if you have any thoughts, if you have any uh, like um, things you want to ask, please allow yourself to ask us to send emails to the Amuna Project um, to ask questions on the Facebook comments. Um, you can send questions on Messenger, um, WhatsApp um, phone number of ours is advertised all over the, the place on social media. Please contact us. Please don't be ashamed and don't be sorry and don't feel bad with yourself. People are very fast falling to self-blaming and oh me, I'm so horrible, I committed those crimes, I violated, like I did this, I did that, I was like, okay, like relax, we, like all of us, we're, we, we need help, like everyone needs help in, in his areas that he's weak at and, and this is what friends are for, that's exactly what we're doing here, this is exactly what we're trying to do to build a, a, a better society and a better community and a supportive and a wonderful group that will uh, will provide healing and, uh, and therapy to, to all. So allow yourself to consult and to talk. And I'm also having um, private sessions and conversations um, on video conferences, conversations with people, with couples who wants to talk and who wants to to open up and to share and to talk about those things and uh, and I can and I'm sure that I'm able to assist you guys if you need um, and just contact us to info at emuna.com and we'll be very very happy and pleased to assist you in any possible way and that's it be strong and be truthful and um, and um, I saw one of the comments earlier that a woman wrote uh, that women should just learn how to say no and um, it's true it's important um, women should learn how to say no I was um, I was um, exposed um, to to conversations to situations where women um, lived tens of years of their lives um, not allowing themselves to refuse to their husbands um, ever like and 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 killing themselves like emotionally destroying themselves in in horrible pain and it's not right it's not true and of course that you have the exact opposite situation with women that will be more needy than their husbands or and also, of course, different problems can be that the woman, she like really has a certain need or will to be loved by her husband or to show love to her husband. And he is not into it. He's like cold like an iceberg. And, and, and it's, it's hard. Like it's something that is very painful. And of course, that other situations can happen. That the woman, it's not like that her husband is abusing her, God forbid, he's just like being normal and she is like always always cold, always not willing, always not wanting to to feel and to be loved or to touch or to have any physical relationship. It's also hard. And this is why we said that every situation is different and in a class, in a speech, you cannot cover all corners and all aspects of every situation and situation but it's very important for the people to be sincere and honest and to open a discussion and to talk about the things that are hurtful for them and to find ways um, to better the communication and the conversation and with the prayer to our creator to reveal his loving kindness on us we gonna finish this wonderful video thank you so much for watching thank you so much for supporting thank you so much for doing the best you can for us and we're gonna continue
doing the best we can for you. And may the Creator answer to all our prayers and all our requests and that everything we do will be accepted and, um, and appreciated by our Creator. And may His name be known to everyone in grace and in, uh, and in love forever and ever. Amen. The world is not existing because Olam Milchon Elem, the world is just blocking the light of truth. The world called Alma de Shika, world of light, is just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. It's just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. We're just inside of an illusion.